I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Richard D. Hansen, and I wanted to kind of share with you my background so that you understand why I'm teaching this blockchain class and the credentials that I have. You know, I've, I've been in computing for a long, long time. We're traveling through a dimension both of sound and ideas. We're at a place where the mind can comprehend and devise a solar radio, a wireless transmitter, measure time and light. When I had my first computer, I had to go down to Radio Shack and buy it. And those of you who are unfamiliar with Radio Shack, they went defunct about, oh, 15 years ago or so. They were an electronics store that, that was just really an electronic play store for a lot of people. You would go and buy components for computers. You'd buy transistors down at that level. Um, it was a real place that you could, for those tech enthusiasts, uh, to go and get stuff like that. Well, eventually, you know, they, they just become, became irrelevant. But my first computer I bought from them, I bought a Radio Shack TRS-80 color computer. Now the TRS-80 color computer couldn't do much. It had an 8K memory. You put cartridges in the side to tell it what programs to run. You use a television for a monitor. And if you wanted to load additional programs, you used a cassette tape to load the data. So while you could do some coding, it actually, I don't think it was even Microsoft Basic, it was a basic of some sort, and you could do some coding. Uh, you could even do machine language coding in there too. It had a, a compiler for that. And so I learned a lot of things on that computer. I probably wore it out before I finally got rid of it. Eventually I was able to get a PCXT when my brother-in-law's company, when they were updating to IBM 286s, and so he handed down the PCXT to me. And this was one of the first desktop machines that IBM made, first what they called personal computer that IBM made. It had two five and a quarter inch floppy disks that you could put in and take out. Um, it had a hard drive in it that I was thrilled to see had 30 megabytes on it. And I was even more thrilled to see that it had a second partition that was another 10 megabytes because the operating system, the DOS operating system for Microsoft at the time could only read 30 megabytes of memory on a hard drive and write to it. So you had this 30 megabyte partition. Then you, if you had any bigger hard drive than that, you had other partitions. So I was thrilled that it had so much space. It was so much more than a floppy disk. And so you could save your data. And so when I, as I got more involved with that, I played around with that, learned more on that. Um, eventually I got into the business of building computers. So about the era of the 286, I was building computers and 386s and 486s and eventually Pentiums. Uh, at one point in time, I worked for a machine shop that happened to be owned by a friend and I did most of his networking and I uh, and did most of his uh, computing needs, fill, full, fulfilled most of his computing needs. And so I remember at one point in time, uh, we were selling memory and he needed to buy memory and, and memory would, would basically almost make you bankrupt. I mean, literally, uh, you bought one megabyte sticks of memory for $38. Now, today, we don't even sell one megabyte sticks of memory. In fact, getting a one gigabyte stick of memory is a little bit low anyway. But can you imagine one gigabyte versus one megabyte? You'd have to have 1,024 megabytes to make one gigabyte and 1,024 times 38. Can you imagine how expensive that is? I, I continued working, continued learning about computers. Um, I lived in the Seattle area and really really wanted to work for Boeing someday, but you know, I didn't build airplanes. I, I was interested in tech stuff. And so I didn't think I'd ever be able to work for a company like Boeing. Well, finally, I realized that Boeing had, you know, had to put computers on everybody's desks. And in order to put computers on everybody's desks, that means they had an IT department that, that built computers or that bought computers and maintained the computers. And maintained servers and data closets and all of that. And I was eventually hired uh, at Boeing and uh, was able to get my a job there now almost 25 years ago. So I've been able to, to work there and enjoy growing up. Now, during this whole evolution, um, about 2008 comes along 
uh, Bitcoin. And then news of the underlying blockchain technology being uh, able to be used for businesses. And so while I was now working for Boeing to maintain finance systems, I became interested in how blockchain could benefit business. So I, I became eventually a certified blockchain expert and allowed it allowed me to expand my knowledge and continue learning and doing more and more research in the, uh, in the blockchain world. So that is why I'm teaching this class. And that is, um, that is a little bit about me and where I've, uh, the journey that I've had in my life. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the class. And if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and help me grow the channel. If anything, subscribe during the time you're here in the class so that you can have a resource for learning about blockchain because this channel is devoted strictly to blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Hope to see you soon. Thanks.